Okay, Jenny. Pantalones y medias. So th there I'm telling her in Spanish, like, time to put on your pants and socks. So basically she responds. No quieres ir a la escuela? Right, so this, in this particular morning, I don't want to go to school. And, and actually, b before I continue there, do, do you have a thought there? Like, is there something that you think about in, in this scenario? I mean, a natural response is sometimes saying, I hear you. Sometimes I don't really want to go to work either. And, oh, that's so good. And then leave it at that. Not react much further. Just be like, yeah, sorry, bud. I feel the same way sometimes. And validating oh God, their feelings so and letting them feel heard. Like, so here's the thing, like you say right now, and it makes so much sense, validate their feelings, let them know, like, I hear you. Let me show you what I did, <laughs> which, okay. which is not that bad. Like it's <laughs> okay. No, vamos a la escuela. Basically I, I said in Spanish, right? I said, uh, okay, we're not going to school, which is kind of weird. Like I took the route of, mm -hmm. of, uh, I'm just trying to stay calm and not blow this out. And then immediately afterwards. Okay, I keep thinking I want to stay at home with grandma. Grandma was visiting at that time. Ooh, yummy lunch, okay. So, and then immediately after, because I didn't make it a big deal. Yeah, definitely don't make it a big deal. And children test boundaries all the time. I test boundaries all the time. I'm sure you do as adults, right? How much can we get away with? Children are the same way, and they're going to say, oh, if I say I don't go to school and dad says, okay, will he follow through? Oh, and if you follow <laughs> okay, through today, oh, can I do it again tomorrow? I wonder how long I can get away with this for. Okay, and it's almost right. becomes a, a game of like, who's going to call who's bluff first. You're right. She could have easily called my bluff and I would have been screwed. You would have been like, <laughs> well then, guess we're staying home. <laughs> yeah. I th that's happened once before. Like I was like, I guess we're, st we're staying home. <laughs> Yeah, you have yeah. to follow through. Okay, I, I really like this. So, so one principle, you have to follow through with what you say. Absolutely. Don't blow things out of proportion, I think is a big one. And maybe it's, I'm not saying all parents do this, but at least my personality, I tend to catastrophize. So basically I, I start thinking like immediately where my mind goes is, oh, she doesn't want to go to school today. Uh, she won't want to go to school tomorrow and the next day and next day. So that's kind of like me catastrophizing. And another thing I think I, we see a lot of parents doing is that catastrophizing, like what you do, parents will make a big deal. Like, oh, why don't you want to go to school? Did something mm -hmm. happen? Did you get in a fight with a friend? Did you, and parents start, and they're all valid. They're all valid concerns. But when you start kind of the Spanish inquisition on your child, they're <laughs> going to freeze and not really know how to respond yes. and they're going to say, and in their mind, they're often processing like, oh, if I say I don't want to go to school, the adult in my life panics and mm. I, I elicit a reaction. Let's see where this reaction goes. And that reaction could be, okay, well, I'll have a talk with your teacher. Oh, okay. You don't have to go to school today. Oh, I'll give you something extra or mm. it incentivize them. So it, it kind of snowballs into bigger things. I want to piggyback off of what you said earlier too, about kids are always testing limits or, mm -hmm. or testing us. Exactly. So is it fair to say that a lot of the interaction that kids are doing, especially in that age range, they're saying things, doing things in a environment at home where they feel safe and therefore they're really testing the limits to see what they can and cannot get away with. Is that like a good way of looking at it? Absolutely. I think especially in their home environment, they feel the safest in their home. So they're going to test boundaries. They're going to jump off their bunk bed when you specifically told them not to. And they'll see, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? I don't know. And similarly on that train of thought, we also see children testing boundaries at school because outside of hmm. home, that school environment is the second place. I would say most people, most children feel the safest at other than inside their home. And when you gave the advice like, oh, you know what? Sorry, bud. Like I feel that way too, but we have to go to school. It may make sense. And in this moment right now, like, God, I love it. Do you have any tips? Like, I, I know it's just practice, right? You just got to keep practicing and you'll get better at it. But is there anything like in the moment that can help a parent remember? It's like, oh, I learned about this before. I, I, I should use these learnings. Yeah. I think one thing to remember, and this is going to sound really weird. It's like to humanize your child, <laughs> right? Like how would you want, if you told your friend today, man, work feels like crap right now and I really don't want to go. How do you want your friend to react? Do you want your friend to be like, sorry, 
you gotta go. <laughs> or do you yeah. want your friend to be like, yeah, I hear you. I'm having a really rough time too. Yeah. And so I think that just remembering to sometimes having to slow down, take a deep breath and just remembering that talk to them like you would want to be talked to. Mm -hmm.